Hello and welcome to Heather and Hops. My name is Kat. Whoa. I haven't done that in a while. Hi. But yeah, I guess we can call her Heather and Hops. My name is Kat. If you're new here, if you've been here before, it's lovely to see you. If you've never stumbled across this space, it is a space where I talk about my knitting and I have done since my very first proper knitting project, which has been quite cool. This really is a space for me to share and kind of track my learning but kind of more importantly it's about community and this year has really been that. I feel like going into this year I wanted the year to be about falling in love with knitting again and it's kind of made me fall in love with it even more through community and actually meeting online friends in real life and the last week has been no different it's been amazing um but we'll talk about that hopefully next week i mean i'm not gonna lie i might dabble into it because it was so exciting i went to if you are a returning viewer you will know that i am a huge fan of critical role and i was lucky enough to go and see it live in London last week um, with not just uh, not not just a, a kind of semi-local friend who is Hannah of the Corner of Craft. If you know Hannah at all, you'll know that she also runs a company called Chromatic Yarns and dyes yarns based on Dungeons and Dragons. And if you don't know, Critical Role is a live play Dungeons and Dragons game voiced by voice actors. It is absolutely joyful it's so nice seeing friends story tell together and just being really best buddies um but also uh, if you've been here for a while you might have remembered that i went to a viking festival this year and the lovely host who invited us over who has been an online knitting friend for quite some time came back over to the uk and went with us so that was really fun and we also went to comic con and just so much goodness but we'll talk about that next week. And I tell you what, I'm so excited to share about the projects that we kind of did together and the <laughs> photos and videos that we got yesterday. They're so fun. Um, anyway, yes, it, it will be hard for me to focus on things that happened two weeks ago when we crammed so much into five, six days together. Uh, and it's just been amazing. But we're going to do it. I hope you're good. Let me know what you've been up to if you'd like to. It's really nice to hear what people are working on and, you know, what fun things people have been doing, whether that's at home or out and about, especially for spooky season and uh, the autumn, which is kind of prime knitting time. Or oh, I feel very chatty. I have myself a cup of chai masala. Uh, I hope you've got a cup of something to keep you company. And I also have my hot water bottle, uh, which I've taken to putting just behind me when I'm recording because it is out of shot, but it also gives me a nice little warm lower back. <laughs> it's very cold in the house today. I'm also wearing my jelly cube, which is a pattern that I designed um, inspired by the gelatinous cube, which is a creature, I guess, a monster in Dungeons and Dragons. It's like a clear jelly that sucks things into it kind of vibes. Um, and yeah, this piece I love so much. I'll stand up so you can kind of... Yeah, it has fringing on the bottom to kind of give more of that jelly jelly flowy vibe I don't know how to describe it but I love this thing it makes me feel I don't know like I'm always dressed up and dressed well when actually I feel like I'm currently just sat in front of a camera in my dressing gown it's great um my a final official sample is finished and it's been finished for way too long but I really want to get really good photos of it and you know when you've got an idea in your head and it can't you can't quite place how to do it and I might just give up and just do what I can but yeah I've had 
ideas in my head for it and I've not been able to do it. But the pattern will be released in the next couple of weeks, I think two weeks time. I wanted to release it sooner because I feel like it was a really good Halloween knit. But I also think it's a really good uh, holiday season knit and just general. So anyway, that's going to happen soon, which is really fun. My test knitters have produce some really beautiful items and I can't wait to share them. Yeah. I feel so grateful. My health is also, um, if you're new here, I started this in the face of long-term illness. Uh, I learned to knit because I couldn't do anything else and I can't believe that I've been on my feet most days for the last six or seven days and I still feel pretty good today. Um, we've done really well in kind of trying to have downtime but I can't believe how far, I can't believe how far I've come. I feel really really grateful. Um, yeah, I've got energy to share today. Uh, whether this will go up on time or not, but who knows. I have a finished project, a very special one, and I got to wear it to the Mighty Nine Live and didn't take a single photo, which is a shame. But I have been working on a test knit by Kelsey Garner, who is Knitting the Carby on Instagram and also runs a natural dyeing company and now does designs. And this is her first ever garment pattern. And she designed this inspired by the Chained Oblivion, which is a betrayer god from Critical Role in the world of Alexandria. And when when Kelsey sent over pictures of this, I was pretty convinced I didn't have time to knit this pattern. But having seen it and seen that it had thumb holes, I I kind of made time. And I really wanted, first of all, to support Kelsey, but I really wanted this in my wardrobe. I thought that a slightly oversized um, textured cabled garment would be something that would be a really good addition to my wardrobe, especially if I knitted it in black um, because I'd wear it all the time. And while I don't think my yarn choice is as beautiful as the yarn that Kelsey knit it with, I'm really happy with my choice of yarn. I'm interested to see how it wears in particular on the cuffs. Um, because it's already starting to fuzz and pill a little bit, but I, I mean, I have worn this a few times already and I've definitely been playing with it in my hands. But this is um, West Yorkshire Spinners Croft, uh, the Shetland, in the colour black, and I will show you it on my person. Um... It is a bottom-up jumper and you start with the body, knit the sleeves and then join the sleeves and the body for raglan decreasing and then you pick up for the button band all the way around and do the buttonholes as you go. I opted to do the sleeves top down and that is just for my own benefit. It, it's not perfect, but I don't think an untrained eye would notice particularly. So I picked up and then knit the sleeves bottom down. I have quite, it seems, odd length arms for my size. And I just really wanted to make sure that the placement of, first of all, the ribbing, where that started, and the thumb hole was just about perfect for me. I knew that if I had done it, you know, too long or too short, I would have been unhappy. And the easiest way I thought was to do it top down. So far, all of the other test knitters have done amazing and fit, made it fit perfectly the opposite way. But I just, yeah, so I did that. That is the only modification I make, uh, made. I managed to get gauge with a, a whole one mil size needle different to Kelsey. I am a loose knitter, so I you know, I wasn't shook by that at all. And I used a DK weight yarn, which I'm quite impressed with. I had a lot of fun working these cables. 
and uh, seed stitch is one of my favourite things to knit alongside ribbing apparently. And yeah, really really happy with this and I'm so glad that, like I said, while I didn't get to document it, this came with me to see the Mighty Nine, which this uh, Betrayer God features quite heavily in that campaign. So this feels very special, it felt like I got to take Kelsey in a roundabout way with me. And I can't wait. We haven't played our, I say our, my kind of longest term campaign of Dungeons and Dragons. It's over two years old. We haven't played in a few months and we get to play next weekend. And I'm very, very excited to reprise my character and see Kelsey, who designed this, play my cat familiar. She plays, uh, he's called Old Salt and he is a somewhat grumpy, very chaotic uh, pirate cat and my character has kind of hidden her chaotic edge a bit through like in the backstory through family and things and I cannot wait to see how old salt brings the chaos back out <laughs> anyway yes I could talk about this for quite some time but it is a beautiful piece I can't wait to see it be released out into the world and for the other test knitters versions to be shown. There is a particularly gorgeous uh, bright pink version that I'm really excited to see. Um, but yeah, Love it. I feel like I shared this one last time we spoke but I can't be sure so a quick two seconds about it. This is a, a one by one rib hat. I can now tell you that I do 3.5mm needles, 100 stitches, and that is generally with any DK weight yarn, and then I'll adjust it if I'm using a different weight of yarn, um, either the needle or the stitch count. And then I just do decreases spread over four or five sections, depending. And this one was four sections at the top, so you've got like a little cross and uh, yeah, I decreased every other round until I was happy. Put the tail end of the yarn through the top and then just pulled it up and wove in the end. And this was using Rum and Raisin by the Rural Company. I love this yarn so much and I couldn't resist having a black-ish hat for the hat box. Um, Alex has kind of laid claim to this one. So when I realized I had quite a lot of yarn left from my Chained Oblivion, I knitted myself another black hat and I did it exactly the same way apart from I did a five section divide on the decreases at the top. So this was knitted using the Shetland Croft yarn by West Yorkshire Spinners and I divided it into five sections like I said in, so each section has 20 stitches and then I just decreased every other round either side of a centre stitch. Hopefully this one will stay in in my person. I still can't find my black mohair hat and my bandana. Both of those items disappeared together and it's very strange. Uh, I've cleaned out the car, I've checked most bags. I wonder if there's any other bag that I've taken out that I can look in. It's very sad, I love me a mohair hat. But yes, these are very simple. I won't put them on, it's just a beanie with a, a two-fold brim. Very simple. This one took me uh, about 24 hours. I knitted it super quickly. I had such a fun time knitting it. I took it into London with me when we went to the British Museum and I sadly got it confiscated but it's fine they just give you a ticket and you go and collect it at the end because I had knitting needles but they didn't take the ones from my hair which I'm actually wearing now. Um, so go figure, you can wear knitting needles in your hair but you can't carry them around. And then this one I knitted while we were at uh, both the Mighty Nine Live and Critical Role. And I was cheeky because I emailed specifically to say like, you know, I know it says no sharp objects but what about knitting needles? And Caroline was a bit stern. She said absolutely definitely not, they're too pointy. So I was cheeky and sent another message to say like, look at the end of these, would these be acceptable? They're bamboo, you know, it's less sharp than a pencil kind of vibes. I didn't say that, but she absolutely not. And I felt like 
Hmm. And I'm really glad that I was cheeky enough and took a project because so many people were knitting and they were knitting on sharp pointy metal ones. So yeah, I got to do a bit of knitting and cheeky, but sometimes you gotta be cheeky, right? Especially if you're a knitter. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> anyway. So this project is so special and I'm so glad I get to share it. It is sort of part of my Lord and cosplay um, and that kind of wasn't intentional initially. Um, Lordna is a character from Critical Role Campaign 3, so a campaign that's currently happening. Um, she is a slightly spooky but really nice character. I really, I really like her. If, if you've been here for a while, you'll see that I've maybe done like some silly Lordna stuff. I've done how I made part of my cosplays. I've done a, a lo-fi girl video dressed as her and just I think it's really nice for when you want company or to study but you don't really want talking on and I've also done making some cookies uh, from that campaign uh, as her and it's quite fun and I, I did kind of need something to make sure I can wear the outfit if I want to when it's a bit colder and these not only sort of knitted themselves because they were so fun to knit, they have become way more special than I could have imagined. Um, so I knitted these, like one of these almost in France. I spun some silk from myself from Cocoon and I will show you that process. I will pop some uh, the video in of that after I've done a little bit more talking. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to do some experimenting, having found a lovely, lovely moth rearer, uh, not too far from where I live. And he has been rearing moths for 45 years and only in the last 12 has been spinning from the cocoon. So I can't even begin to imagine how much silk He's just got rid of and it's wild to me and he does have a shop and I think it's staying open for just a little bit longer um, and I'd love to buy some more but I bought myself a little bit because I thought this could be a a trial pair I've knitted the silk that I've spun into these socks and if it works as I hope I will knit them I will spin some more and knit the whole of the base of the foot with silk and then, as I've done here, leave the rest um, just for strength. And my thought here is that I know that if you're wanting to not use nylon, a lot of people say don't use silk thread because it's so strong and fine that it, you know, it can cut through the wool. It's stronger than it, so it breaks it. And I thought while it will be just as strong because it's still the long strong fibres. If I spun a looser spin and slightly thicker, I might be able to use it and slightly felt it together and give me a really hard wearing base. The only part of my hand knitted socks I've ever worn, mostly due to, I keep forgetting what it's called, like a divider you know you've got two rooms and depending whether you've got carpet or not you have a like a strip and then it's screwed into the ground i've caught my foot on those screws a few times and that's how i've got holes in my socks i actually haven't yet got natural holes in my socks but i did think this would help as a you know a trial and to figure out if maybe it can withstand that and so far I've worn these loads like it's been so cold so suddenly and these are way more comfortable than tights to wear um they just are and they're wool so they are knitted using woolly knit 100% British wool cone and it is a darkish brown colour I have already knitted a jumper with this yarn 
these weigh exactly 100 grams, um, which means they are a little bit over the normal socks gain because you get a bit more yardage with this yarn. Um, and that does factor in the silk, and I don't think the silk weighed very much. So I, I'm quite impressed with how far these went. I noted down my patterns so I can make more, which is really exciting. And like I said, I I like knitting socks. There's a time and a place for socks, but it's not my favourite thing on the planet. And if I do knit them, I need to have texture. I can't believe I knitted one of these in three days and then had the whole both both socks finished le in less than two weeks. Um, they are knitted using one by one rib with a simple cable up the sides. Um, I I flipped the cable so they're different on each sock, and it doesn't really matter which way they go. But I, you know, I did my usual toe toe situation which is the wedge toe. I knitted up, did a short row heel. I did a couple of decreases after the heel and then slowly increased as I went up and then decreased again for the cuff and did a one by one rib cuff. I have, just like I did with the um, Women Want Me Fish Fear Me socks that I test knit, as was recommended, I have put two strips of uh, sock elastic around the top and while I'm not that partial to adding elastic to most things that don't need it, this has been genius because they're so high up on the leg and you know you move so much or I do, you know, from sitting cross-legged, standing up, you know, stretching and doing weird things which is my toddler personality. Um, these I wore all day at Comic-Con and I think I pulled them up a couple of times, but they actually didn't need it. I was just, you know, wearing something slightly different from my person. So this has been amazing. They fit perfectly. And um, we did, I don't think it was loads and loads, but I think we did five miles of walking. And the shoes that I've made for my Lord and cosplay are out of... Chesterfield leather from my parents, which I'll show you in the future. I love them so much, um, but they are just two, um, as thick as two pieces of leather, no, no thicker. And these have worn perfectly. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll bring them closer so you can have a little look and I will note it down now and I'll take a bit of footage of me wearing them so you can see how they fit. But I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing. <laughs> And yeah, I really hope that you enjoy seeing how I process the silk. For me, um, one of the most special parts of that was that it is how I spent my autumn equinox. I had a really lovely day. I think Alex Blessim had to work and I just stayed at home and processed the silk and it dried quick enough that I could start spinning that day. So. Yeah, just really special pair of socks and I, I really am very excited to cast on the second pair. I just, I want to make sure I've chosen the right yarn and don't have anything black in my wool pantry at the moment for socks, but I might over dye something because, you know, use what you've got. So yeah, super, super fun, a wonderful experiment, a great outcome and I'm buzzing with how these fit.
So the next thing will be works in progress and I'm going to start working on Alex's elk mail if you've been here for a long time. Uh, you'll have seen the project. I'm not going to get it out because I haven't worked on it, but I'm knitting the Elf Mail by Danny Meager for Alex uh, in some Tweedy yarn. And now I've got my test knits out of the way. I've done all my samples for this and for the yarn journal, which you can now see those patterns, which is wild and very, very exciting. Um, Susan's taken the most beautiful photos. Well, she didn't, but she got the most beautiful photos taken. Um, and I feel very privileged to have been able to be part of that. Um, I'll put a picture up. The hair jumper and scarf that I worked on in the middle of summer. Um, so yeah, and since I've got all of those projects out of the way, I think it's time to finish Alex's jumper. And then I have a couple of ideas for projects that I'd really liked in it from other people's patterns, but then another pair of socks is definitely quite high priority for me. So we'll see. But the only other whip I have been working on is in here. And this is one that I thought I might end up wearing to the Mighty Nine live, but I'm glad I didn't, because this has been a really nice project to have around for sitting with people. So this has been quite special because now I've I've knitted on it with other fibre friends from around, you know, around the world and around the country. This was knitted using two yarns, which are super fun. And yeah, so this is the man with the big pink hand, which was a club colourway from Hannah of the Corner of Craft, um, who I was with when I did a bit of knitting on this. It was so nice to see Hannah again and to meet Mario, her husband. Um, and this is one of my favourite club colourways she's done. And I think one of hers do. It's just, it's the perfect balance. It's cool with some hot pink in there, lilac. Bring it close. And I, I'll show you it here. So this is how it looks knitted up. And I've also added in Design of a Decade by ginger twist studios on her leading lady lace base which is a mohair lace um, this is one that i used to knit my hot pink version of this so i'm really excited to pair them together i'm gonna feel so extra and i don't i'm not mad about it at all um i love the way they come together i knew that i wanted to put these two yarns together for quite some time and when i finished knitting my test knit I was like, you know what, I want a joyful, fun, just whimsical cast on before me. And this is exactly what it is. This is the Cherry by Midori Hirose. Um, I shrunk my very first version of it and was really quite sad. It was a, a sort of dusk, dusty duck egg blue, like a little bit more grey than duck egg. It was really, really beautiful um, and sad. I was very sad when it went. So this is kind of not quite a replacement because it is much more bardic it's very sassy it's very out there but i'm enjoying it i have done my usual sort of a little bit of fussing with the pattern not not dramatically but i haven't done it knitted it quite so long in terms of length it is a kind of yoke at the start and then goes into a raglan so I didn't knit down quite so far and haven't done as many increases. Um, the sizing on this is bizarre, but it, it is what it is. Um, there are, it, it should, it's got quite a lot of ease in it. And for me, it's way too much on my person. Um, but I have just about, I would say finished the body and will pick up for the sleeves and divide the leftover yarn that I have into half. And just knit them kind of as long as I can. But it's so fun. I love these colours so much. It is very Scanlan. If you are interested in finding out what Critical Role is about without sinking 
huge amounts of hours, there is a series called The Legend of Vox Machina where they have animated part of the first campaign in which Scanlan features and, you know, they're 20 minute episodes and really, really good fun. It is definitely an adult show, that's fair warning, I would say on that. It's brilliant, really great storytelling, amazing characters and Scanlan is in it with his bright pink mage hand, <laughs> aka Scanlan's hand. So yeah, I'm very excited to wear this but I'm not rushing any knits at the moment. I'm not rushing anything. It's kind of time to slow down and start start almost nesting. We've got one more weekend of being busy and then nothing until the panto. Oh no, you don't. Um, which is wonderful. Um, we just, it's been so great. I can't even tell you, but we definitely do need a few weeks of <laughs> straightening up the house and just being. I have just a little bit of spinning. Um, I've got more ideas of spinning projects and things that I want to do. Is I guess it's just never ending. But I ended up, if you were here last time, I shared some white face woodland that I've been working on and I took to uh, the event called Wild About Wall, which I will show footage of at the end very soon. Uh, it is an event that was hosted at the Chiltern Open Air Museum, one of our favourite local places to go. While we were watching a sheepdog herd sheep, um, I was doing some spinning and a lovely little girl was like, oh I want to try that. So I let her and I thought I was going to turn this into a three ply and do a big quantity but in the end I just wanted to see how, how it was spinning up and um, knit with it a little bit. I've never knitted with 100% white face woodland. So I've done a two ply. The little bit that, that she spun is in here somewhere and it is very cute. Um, but I'm going to, now that I've plotted it on my drop spindle, I'm going to do a little bit of swatching with it and see how it comes out. I did think of maybe using some of the silk that I've got left and blending a little bit in, just a little bit into it and maybe using it for my sock and having really bouncy socks but I'm not sure and maybe maybe adding a little bit of Jacob in here but lots lots of thinking on this but I really didn't I wasn't sure if I really did want to do a three ply because it it means a little bit of more thinking for me which is not a problem and planning between bobbins because I'm quite limited on what bobbins I have but I, I don't know it's so bouncy that it would be wonderful as a three ply, it would be so round and squishy, but I didn't think it necessarily needed it, so we'll see what it knits up like. And finally, I finished this morning my affectionately called Little Mister Spin, which is this little dude here, is Little Mister. Um, he is a quick felted version I did, and I'd love to remake him. I've been talking about this for ages. I want to put LEDs in like the fire in his eyeballs I think it'd be really really fun and now I've got a bit of an understanding on felting I think I could do a better job but I love him this is little mister I'll show you the yarn and hopefully you'll be able to see why It feels quite apt that I finish this this morning because whilst the little bit of orange, like the main bit of orange you can see, was actually the leftover from Little Mister here, quite a bit of the orange, the pinks, the yellows, was a, a little bit of sari silk that I was kindly given by Frida that I blended up with some alpaca from my parents and grated a, a fibre that. And Frida left yesterday afternoon so it's like, she was here with me just for a little bit more. And what I think I'm going to do with this is wind half of it off and just do a two-ply. 
I was in France when I did this and didn't think to weigh out half of the bat that I took. So I could, I could do a double pull ball and just do it that way, but I think it's quite, it's a bit nicer spinning from a bobbin given the opportunity to, but yeah, very excited to have this one finished. And to knit with it, I think it's going to be a fun one to knit up given it's got so many colours in, but it still reads quite moody. Yeah, it should be, I think there's 55 grams here. Enough to do something. I really loved spinning the sari silk. It kind of, I say it when I'm spinning, it kind of pulls you back in because it changes the texture so much. And I tried not to be too particular about you know, taking the nets apart and making it be fine, but I did a little bit of that and it kind of keeps you involved and yeah, it's really, really fun. Do recommend. Yeah, very, very happy. Can't wait to, you know, let this yarn tell me what it's going to be, but yeah, fun project. Okay, I, uh, <laughs> bit of chaos energy today, trying to be calm, but I'm so excited to talk to you about the last week, I really am. We we actually fitted in so many things from, you know, the Mighty Nine Live and Comic Con, but we also went to St Albans Cathedral, we went to a lovely little tiny exhibition in one of our favourite hidden spots in Watford, um, met some really lovely people, and I can't wait to share all that with you next time, but this time I will put in some footage from the British Museum, which we have thoughts on, but you know, it is what it is at the moment, we can't do much um, flapping around. Uh, there's some amazing pieces in there still, it, it, the textiles always blows my mind even if there's not very much of them, which is why I'd like to get to the V&A. And then the World of Outwall event, which was really, really fun. Um, it was quite inspiring to meet the wet felter in particular. She did some really interesting things, felting not just walls together, but other fibres. Um, it was a shame that there was quite a bit of acrylic when it came to the actual knitting and crocheting. Um, again, that's fine, but when it's an event called Wild About Wool, uh, <laughs> seemed weird. Uh, a really fun event, so if you want to stick around and see that, it will be lovely and hopefully I get to see you again very soon. Hopefully get to share all the fun things next week with you and yeah! Thank you so much for joining me today, I do really appreciate the company and like I said if you want to share what projects you're working on I always like to hear, it's nice to get the inspiration and share that among the peoples. Yeah, I hope that you're doing well, I hope that you and your loved ones are healthy or on the mend, and just don't forget to love each other. I love you.
natural wool from that long ago. Second World War. So my uncle Albert was born in 1899 and he fought in the First World War. He told him he was 19 and he was 15 years old and this was in 1914. So signing was too short, he was an inch under the regulation minimum height. But they, they let him join. He was five foot two and he should have been a minimum of five foot three. They let him in and join and he fought in a couple of big battles and then he got badly wounded on the Somme in 1916. And then they sent him home. Um, uh, and he stayed in the army, helped through some training or something. Stand, but he's just saying to her, you know, that's where I want you to be. But what she's doing is protecting her land.
Hum? Vou mandar no Scootista.